when we started this project and this was sometimes in 2007 or 2006 or 7 so at that time point as i told earlier the chickpea we used to call it orphan legume crop and that molecular breeding is like was like a dream but now just during last six seven years we have reached a stage that not only we develop the genomic resources but now breeders are using them and we are ready or be in ne next one or two years uh, a smallholder farmers will have the access on the product of the genomics in chickpea we expect because we have just um, for the last three years in the tl1 we've been trying to integrate this genomics into our local in our local germplasm right now we have gotten the products so we think shortly the farmers will get better varieties which are drought tolerant which are better yielding as compared to the local jam plasm that we had earlier. This year in 2011-2012, we have done the multi-location field trial and the three locations in India, three locations in Africa. And we are finding, we, we were very excited, our breeders are very excited to have those results that these lines that what we have developed, they are very superior in terms of the drought tolerance. And if everything goes fine, we believe that within the phase two and next one or two years, several of these lines will be released as the varieties and then smallholder farmers will have the access on those varieties. So in the end, genomics is reaching to the smallholder farmers. Ethiopia has a good stake in producing chickpea for export local consumption. And it's one of the places in, uh, known for that matter, we know the importance of chickpea, and we are trying to make use of those projects, including TL1, for gaining the best uh, out of chickpea. So in that regard, I think now we are at the point of impact. We are at the point of making wells out of chickpea technologies even. Yeah. So uh, the presence of TL1 will rather make uh, our effort more and scaled up. Of course, apart from nutritional security, especially in the dry land, the large-scale farmers, after harvesting their wheat and maize, they plant chickpea and other legumes. They improve their soil health because it fixes nitrogen and it adds organic matter. So that in the next season, when they come and plant their crop, they will not apply a lot of fertilizer. So that is one impact, reduced costs of subsequent cereal crops. So that is an impact that they are, it has, apart from giving them money in the cropping system, there is a possibility that it, it, it is reducing their cost of fertilizer input for the subsequent crop. So in the lowland, food security, that is the impact. And of course, they are selling it and they are making money from from the legumes and of, of course there is also redu reduction in the use of insecticides and fungicides because of uh, breaking the, the, the break the, 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 there is the breakage of disease cycles chickpea is very important India imports chickpea so for India for that for instance if these farmers can generate or they can have the varieties with higher crop productivity then one is that this will be very helpful for India in terms of the ensuring the food security in the country. The second is in some developing countries like Ethiopia, chickpea is being, well, now in during last three, four years, chickpea production has been come double, etc. You know why? Although Ethiopian population, they, well, they love to eat chickpea, but more than that, they are exporting this chickpea to India. The same thing in Kenya. So what is happening? If you can help these farmers, if you can enhance the crop productivity, these farmers basically or, be, or this, this improved varieties will help to generate more income to the farmers. As a result, these farmers or the poor farmers will have the possibility to send their kids to the school, for instance. So this will impact on income generation on the poor farmers, even in those countries where chickpea is not being consumed, but this is being exported. The impact can be explained by one thing, by, by, by creating the demand itself. When the demand is aggressive, that means there is something from the beneficiary side. This is a simple indicator. 
On the other hand, there is the income level of the farmers who are in that uh, technology adoption, who are making really uh, uh, money by selling that. And the way I see the impact is there for sure. People are changing their lives, people are teaching their uh, children to the university level, people are constructing better houses, saving and uh, constructing houses even in towns. Uh, so in this respect I would say the impact is there.